On February 19, 1994, Gloria Ramirez was admitted to the emergency room of Riverside General Hospital. She was suffering from late-stage cervical cancer, and when she arrived, she was extremely confused, experiencing heart palpitations and abnormal breathing. The medical staff injected her with several sedatives, but when it became clear that she wasn't responding to the treatment, they tried to defibrillate her heart. As soon as they did, several witnesses say they saw an oily sheen covering Ramirez's body and noticed the smell of fruity garlic emanating from her. Working quickly, nurse Susan Kane drew blood from Ramirez and noticed an ammonia-like smell coming from the tube. When she handed the syringe to resident Julie Gorchinsky, she noticed manila-colored particles floating in the blood. Soon after, Kane fainted and was removed from the room, and Gorchinsky began to feel nauseated and lightheaded and left the room as well before also fainting. Shortly after this, the respiratory therapist, Maureen Welsh, was the third to faint. At this point, the staff ordered an evacuation of all patients and staff members into the parking lot, but before they could remove everyone, 23 people had become ill, and five needed to be hospitalized. A few staff members stayed to work with Ramirez, but after about 45 minutes, she was pronounced dead due to heart and kidney failure. Initially, the illnesses of staff and emergency room patients were believed to be a case of mass hysteria catalyzed by the strange smell in the air, but an investigation by Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory had a far different explanation. They believed that Ramirez may have been self-administering dimethyl sulfoxide as a home remedy to treat her cancer. The lab postulates that oxygen administered to Ramirez in the ambulance may have reacted with this compound to produce dimethyl sulfone, which is known to crystallize at room temperatures and would explain the particles in the blood. This compound is then thought to have reacted with the electric shocks of the defibrillator to produce dimethyl sulfate, a highly toxic substance that is known to cause many of the symptoms experienced by patients and staff in the area. The third theory, posited by the New Times LA, states that Ramirez may have been exposed to precursor chemicals used in the production of methamphetamine, specifically methylamine. The theory suggests that hospital workers involved in meth production may have been smuggling meth precursors in IV bags, and that one of the bags was mistakenly given to Ramirez. While no hard evidence of this claim can be found, the theory cites the distinctive ammonia-like smell of meth precursors as support for the suspicion. It's been decades since this strange event, and the dimethyl sulfate explanation stands as the official cause of the mysterious illnesses, but Ramirez's family isn't convinced by the explanation, and continues to search for answers. Whatever the case is, whether it be strange chemical reactions, drug smuggling, mass hysteria, or something else entirely, for now, the true cause of the toxic death of Gloria Ramirez remains a mystery. If you'd like to learn more about the toxic death of Gloria Ramirez and other mysteries, I've included links below to videos and other resources. And if you like what I'm doing here and want to support me, please like, subscribe, and share on your social platform of choice. I post new bite-sized videos daily about mysteries, cryptids, aliens, and all things strange to kick off your day. See you tomorrow.